Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access. In the previous screencasts, we've been working a lot with the order details table, which is the junction table between the products table and the orders table. One product can be ordered many times and one order can have many products. And hence, we resolve that with this order details table. The thing that's odd about this order details table, though, is that there's a two field primary key field. Together, the order ID value and the product ID value together need to be unique because obviously one order can have many line items, so that order ID field can be duplicated many times in the order details table, and one product can be ordered many times. So that product ID field can be duplicated many times. But taken together, one order should not have a product ID listed more than once because after all, if you need two or three or 20 of the same product on an order, you just change the quantity field for that line item. So together, they are a two field primary key field. Individually, they serve as the foreign key field in these one to many relationships with their respective tables. So the product ID field is both part of a two key primary key field and is also the foreign key field to the products table. Same with order ID. Together with the product ID, those two fields together form the primary key field for the order details table, but individually, it's the foreign key field to the orders table. Now, I personally do not like multiple field primary key fields, so if this were my database, I would probably go into table design view and add a new field here at the top and call it something like order details ID and give it an auto number data type, I would change the primary key field then from the order ID and product ID together and change it to the order details ID field, which is an auto number. Auto number data types serve as excellent primary key fields because we are sure that each record is going to have a unique value and it automatically gets numbered. So if I look at this table and data sheet view now, that order details ID field that I just added has automatically numbered all these 2,155 records. And remember, it also serves as a very light audit trail precaution because if you were to look at this table and see a bunch of numbers skipped, you would know that a bunch of records have been deleted and you want to research why that happened. So in the beginning, the auto number is the actual number of records in the table, but over time, as you edit and delete records, that number does get off. So never consider the auto number value to be the record number. Always just consider it to be a unique value that uniquely identifies each and every record, just like a check number on your check register. So now when we look at the relationships and I've changed that primary key field to be this order details ID field, it looks a little bit more familiar to us. So now the order ID field is only serving as the foreign key field to the orders table, and the product ID field is only serving as the foreign key field to the products table. You might agree that that's a little bit more straightforward, but then you might also say to me, but still, Lisa, we want the combination of the order ID and product ID to be unique for every record. Because again, on one order, we're not going to list a product twice. We're just going to change the quantity value. So if we get back into the design view of that table, I can show you how to make the combination values of the order ID and the product ID to still be unique. And we do that through indexes. So when you open your index dialog box, you might see a lot of different indexes. And I'm going to go ahead and delete all of them except for the primary key index. The primary key index is always automatically added on whatever field you have set as the primary key field, and they give it the index name primary key. You can call the index name whatever you want. To create your own indexes, I'm going to call this one order ID and product ID. Just to be very clear on what I'm indexing, I'm going to add two fields here, the order ID and the product ID. And when I click that index name, you see these index properties. I can say unique. Let's change that to yes. I want the combination of the order ID and the product ID to be a unique value so that the same product doesn't get ordered on two different lines of one order. Now, indexes are important to relational databases for a couple of reasons. The first being that if you set an index, you can demand that the values in that index, whether it be one field or multiple fields, be unique as we did here. 
That's one reason for indexes. Another reason for indexes is that if you are constantly sorting by a particular field, such as last name or product name, you probably want to put an index on that. That will speed up your searches and your sorts. You also want to look at your indexes because sometimes access will automatically add indexes that you don't need. And that causes a little bit of overhead on your relational database that if deleted would speed up your the performance of your database. So it's good to review the indexes of every table for both performance reasons to add the indexes that you need for the fields that you commonly sort on or for the fields that you want a unique combination of values in and to delete the indexes that you don't need. And both of those things will help you improve the integrity and performance of your database. Thank you.